All right, good evening, everyone. We begin the readout tonight with a message to Republicans. Okay, we get it. COVID is the precious, and you love it. You love COVID so much, you want it to spread in the schools, at the office, in the Walmart, on the cruise ships, and at the club. That gray spongy ball with the red spikes, you want it pumping through your veins with an ivermectin chaser. Why do you love it so daggone much? Well, we have absolutely no bloody idea. But here's the thing, you weirdos. Everyone else, everyone else hates COVID. It is ravaging classrooms and hospitals across the nation, like in Southern Illinois, where zero ICU beds are available. Similar shortages are happening all over the South, including in Alabama, where a man's family said he died after being turned away from 43 hospitals. While in South Carolina, 20 children need critical care due to COVID-19. And you see this beautiful couple? They both died in their 30s from COVID, leaving behind five kids, including a newborn daughter. So yeah, the rest of us hate that this is happening. Even the Pope. The Pope hates COVID too, and he loves everybody. He also says, get vaccinated. Yet you, you Republicans, seem to be A-OK -okay with COVID running wild. And then you came for California, trying to boot a Democratic governor from a blue state and hand it over to the COVID candidate. I don't believe the science uh, suggests that young people should be vaccinated. I don't believe the science suggests that young people uh, should have to wear masks uh, at, at school. I'm not sure the science is settled on that at all. And young people are not likely to contract the, uh, the uh, coronavirus. And when they do, their symptoms are likely to be mild and they're not likely to be hospitalized and they're certainly not likely to die. If misinformation could kill, it all helps to explain why Governor Gavin Newsom beat the recall effort, and by a lot winning support from more than 60% of the electorate. According to exit polls, the most important issue for voters was the coronavirus. And when asked about the governor's job on COVID, 65% said his policies were about right or not strict enough. So Republicans, your thirst for COVID is why you lost. Nobody likes your policies that threaten our safety and our kids. You, you may want COVID. You may want to ingest horse dewormer and attend far too many funerals, but we, we don't. And instead of just saying that or tweeting that or fighting about that, California voted that. It is perhaps the first real tangible proof that your creepy little COVID-loving death cult ways are not going to work for you at the ballot box next year. In fact, it's political suicide and also apparently talk radio suicide because your brilliant little COVID plan is killing your right-wing hosts. The majority of us Americans want things like, I don't know, better infrastructure, good schools, gun reforms, jobs, and the right to vote. You know what else we want? We want to live, not die from COVID. Joining me now, David Pluff, former Obama campaign manager, and Jason Johnson, professor of politics and journalism at Morgan State University. And David, look, you're the political guru, not me. So I, I, I don't know everything about politics, David. But I do know that being the people on the side of COVID strikes me as bad politics. Are you surprised that Republicans have seemed to think embracing COVID as the precious and trying to get it into every school building, cruise ship, job place, Walmart, Texaco, everywhere. They're trying to get it in everywhere. Are you surprised that that turns out to be not so great politics? Joey, sadly, nothing surprises me anymore. But yeah, last <laughs> night, uh, the recall was the first test post-2020 of how this may play out. And I know everybody says California is unique. The recall certainly is unique. I hope we never have another one. But if you look at what happened, so out here, uh, they're called no party preference voters, NPPs, but they're independents. Um, about 90% of them, so we're not fucking Democrats, independents are vaccinated. And the exit polls suggest Newsom won them over two to one. The Newsom campaign believes they won Republicans in the Bay Area by over 20 percent and did very well down south. So if you're looking at 22, I think Democrats should have a more expansive view of the votes that are available to them. And it's basically the vaccinated. <laughs> so you're talking, yes. you're not going to get all of them. But when you talk about, hey, you're fishing in a pond of two thirds as opposed to just like 54 or 55 percent, uh, I think you can make progress. Uh, and, and the Republicans clearly are going to continue to dig in and dig in and dig in. Uh, and, and I think, you know, ultimately, it's it's a tragedy for the country. It's a tragedy for people, for families, for businesses. Uh, but this shows that we can never again have leadership in power uh, who doesn't take something like a pandemic seriously. So, yeah, I think last night was really, really important. And we have to carry some of the lessons from the recall 
out to the rest of the country. And certainly in governor's races, where you've had Democratic governors doing the right thing, a bunch of Republican governors, with some exceptions, but DeSantis being a good example doing the wrong things, you have to make them pay a price for that. Indeed. I mean, and not even taking the pandemic seriously, Jason, but it seeming to embrace the pandemic and seeming to want to push the pandemic and make it worse and say, we want COVID. They actually seem to want it in their lives and among their kids. I have to show you this, this heat map. This is an incredible pair of maps. Look at the screen, everyone. OK, yeah. this is a map yeah. in which you can see the blue. It's counterintuitive, but the blue on the map onto my left, to screen left, is where people voted yes, recall Governor Newsom. On the right side, my screen right, the red down the middle is the COVID hotspots. So basically, <laughs> Jason, where people wanted to recall Newsom is where there's the most COVID. So they're like, give us more. Inject it in us. Is there a way that we can drink it in a Kool-Aid cup? Because we want it, and we want it bad, and we want this man to get out of our way. We want our COVID. It's insane. They, they want their COVID, they want their iodine, they want their ivermectin, they want it injected into their rears. Whatever it is that these people want, I don't entirely understand. And, and Joy, look, I am, I, am, I am stressing my brain to go back throughout history. I don't know if it's the old Republican Party, the old Democratic Party, the Whig Party. I don't remember a party ever being successful saying, we're for smallpox. Uh, you know, we're for scurvy. I don't, I don't know that that's ever happened. <laughs> Right, right. The pox party. Yes, a pox upon <laughs> all houses. Right. I, I don't think that's a good plan. But but here's the, the caution I have to have about California for people to understand. It is incredibly easy to vote in California. They, they sent mail yes. ballots to everybody. Right. There were apps that you could use. There was information available. So, yes, in a in an in equal measure on a neutral playing field, the failure of Republicans to address covid should be a huge boon for Democrats in 2022. Yeah. But that's only in a state where voting is reasonably easy and accessible. So that's not going to be the case in Florida. It's not going to be the case in Texas. And it won't be the case in Georgia. Well, that's why they're going to make it hard. Because th I think that Ron DeSantis, look, he may be maybe a sociopath. We don't know what his, his pathology is. But he's not stupid. And I think that he understands that if he is going to inflict death on school children, he's going to have to make it real hard for their parents to vote. Right. And, here, and, and they're going to do Republicans anything they can in the states where they, for whatever reason, these governors love COVID. They heart COVID. This is how they feel about COVID. They want to spread it. But they know that they also can't get reelected because the majority of people probably feel like this. This is a California exit poll, but I doubt that it's different in any other state. 65% of people in that exit poll said that they believe getting vaccinated is a public health responsibility. Only 32% said they think it's a personal choice. That exit poll also showed that people wanted more strict policy, not less strict policy, because most people want their lives back. You had this, um, what, what is the guy's name here, who said that he wanted, Dan Crenshaw, Dan Crenshaw, Republican, said, I'm honestly curious, he says. <laughs> Why Californians didn't want some balance in their government? Works well in deep blue states like Massachusetts and Maryland, both the Republican governors, Charlie Baker and Larry Hogan, are the governors of those states. But, David, they're not insane. They're not saying more COVID. It's COVID in your schools. They're not, they're not pushing COVID. So the, the divided government right. argument, in my mind, won't work for Republicans this time around. Do you agree? Well, by the way, uh, Joy, any Republican who's been responsible in the pandemic is at great risk at losing a primary. That's where we are. That, too. So basically, yeah, yeah. so I, I think that there's a third of the people out here in California who voted for the recall. There's a third of the people who say it should be your personal choice. Yes, the Republicans are making it harder to vote, so that third has more power in general elections. But let's make no mistake, that third or 30 percent, that hardcore MAGA base, they're going to drive Republican politics and therefore a big part of our country's dynamic for a very, very long time. Uh, and they're not going anywhere. Right. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, Jason makes a good point about voting. Um, but I think the other thing to watch here carefully, listen, when you're in a swing district or a swing state and you think the race is going to be like 51-49, you've got to scratch and claw for every advantage. And one thing to watch is let's look at Florida. I think we're not even at 55, 58 percent fully vaccinated. But 90 percent of people over 65 are. So yes. here's people who've been vaccinated. And this is true all over the country. You know, Joy, Florida very well, Joy. They're safe. <laughs> They're happy to be vaccinated. They'd like yep. their kids and their grandkids to be vaccinated. And I think you could make some inroads with seniors over this issue. 
Uh, you know, Biden did better than Hillary did in 2020, but I think now we might have an opportunity. I don't want to overstate it. I'm not saying we're going to win seniors by 20 points, but if you just overperform there by four or five points, because these are people who are less, I think, um, sensitive to disinformation because they took the vaccine, even right. if they had questions and they're healthy and they're yes. safe. And so I would watch this very carefully. Can Democrats overperform with voters over 65 just by two to three points? And that could make an enormous difference in a midterm election.